A Play Tale Requiem, Elden Ring, God of War Ragnarok, Horizon 2 Forbidden West, Stray, and Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Not a bad lineup for a Game of the Year nominees. However, there's one game missing from this list, nay, from this entire listing. I scrolled through every category and no matter where I went, there was always one game missing. And that game not only has the best art direction, best score in music, best action, and obviously best indie, but it's also the game of the year. Well, at least for me. Ladies and gentlemen, Freedom Planet 2. It took Galaxy Trail 7 to 8 years to release this one, and the hard work, even during the coronavirus crisis, has paid off exponentially. With the announcement released on Christmas Day of 2015, my excitement for Freedom Planet 2 was... not as enthusiastic as one would imagine. I simply thought to myself, a sequel to an already great indie game? Let's see how this play out. I would eventually find out in 2017 as there were four trailers of the game, one for each character. Then in the coming years, a demo was released for the public to experience, inside of the game's progression, and lastly, the release date. I knew the moment I saw that release date that I would stream the game day one, which you can see for yourselves, links in the description. And I was so glad that I did play it day one because, oh my god, this game is fucking awesome. So for those who have not played the game, I'll be as light with the storytelling as possible to avoid major spoilers. After the shedding of the Kingdom Stone and the defeat of the intergalactic warlord Brevin, a water dragon by the name of Murka emerges from her prison and seeks revenge against the ruler of Shane II, the Magister. Three years pass and Lyak and her friends, Carol and Mila, I love Mila by the way, continue their efforts to rid Avalades of the evil machinery. Accompanying them is Shane II's law enforcer, Nira Lee, who was a boss in the first game and is now a full Flesh playable character. The heroes seek assistance from other fighters to help them in their struggle. Their travels lead them to Shane Mu's Battle Sphere, where they meet Captain Kala, the Battle Sphere champion, Karazone, Carol's sister, and Ah, a scientist that specializes in robotics. Why is his name Ah? Oh, yeah, Triple A. <laughs> I love this little guy. And I can't forget about Askel, an earth dragon that's also an earthbender that's voiced by Christopher Sabat, whom some of you know as Piccolo from Dragon Ball, All Might from My Hero Academia, or Captain Yummy from Black Clover. Eventually, Murka announces herself to the Three Kingdoms and awakens on Luna's spaceship called Bakunawa. With Avalis's fate hanging thin, the heroes battle against Murka to prevent Bakunawa from destroying the world. The characters maintain their sense of humor from the first game, but their interactions are more... deep than before, especially when they interact with the newcomers. Mila isn't the timid little puppy we once knew when Nier expresses her cold-heartedness. It would be unwise of you to refuse. Carol is still the upbeat wildcat that she is until she meets Karazone, which honestly wears her out. Carol, was that... was that your sister? Yeah, honestly, I'm totally weirded out right now, so... Totally understandable. And to get this out there, her reaction to the Bell Sphere is priceless. Hands down, one of my favorite cutscenes. <laughs> what? Why is she making a- <laughs> I've never seen- Wait, no, she stormed out without the- What the fuck was- <laughs> Oh my god, can I- I want to see that cutscene again. What the fuck was that? <laughs> she had like the biggest 
<laughs> Fucking what? Look on her face. Like, what the hell, man? But I think the one character that gets involved deeply is Lilac. Seeing Murga not only makes her agitated, but only wishes to sympathize with her. After all, they're both water dragons. I say that not only the performance of the characters is superb, but also their overall projection of character is a plus. No character in this game has ever given me a rough time or has ever left me a negative impression, not even near herself despite her temper. All in all, the characters accomplish their roles to make the story as intriguing and interesting as possible, with a sense of humor on the side. This is a game after all, so how's the gameplay? Fan. Fucking. Tastic. Each character has their own strengths and weaknesses, and in the end, Freedom Planet 2 offers some of the best platforming experiences anyone can have. Lilac maintains her usual moveset from the first game, and her stamina consumption is much better in comparison. She can now stop her dragon boost midway, which then saves some stamina for her to use. Carol also maintains her own moveset from Freedom Planet 1, but this time she no longer has Chun Li kicks. New to her moveset is his throwing disc that she can use in multiple directions. It can also be used to cover more distances. Where the disc is thrown is where she can go. She also has her motorbike, which, when thrown, can be put on hold until she needs it again. Mila is not the picker-upper you once knew. Not only has she mastered the art of Taekwon Dog, but her block abilities have also been enhanced. She can now summon a block that she can use in multiple shots or as a single burst. She can also attack in midair, which I think could have been buffed up, but it gets the job done when used against small enemies. Her barrier ability is back and is just as great as it was in the first game. Mila in this game is much better, but I say there's room for improvement. Finally, there's Nira, who specializes in long range and short range combat. With her cryo stab, she's able to shoot icicles, freeze opponents and use them as platforms, thrust her stab twice to attack and to dash a little in midair create little ice spikes on the ground that not only can be used to jump off of, but can also be used to defeat enemy projectile attacks. That's awesome. But the one move in her moveset is his swirl attack that can be used for additional damage and can also be used to gain more altitude. Combined with their double jump, this swirl attack can be used to reach hard to reach areas that the double jump may not reach. I can see this being used for speed running. In addition, all characters have a dodge ability that's not only extremely useful when in combat, but with Nira, her moveset is much faster than the duration of her stamina use. This is an ability that I think should be a staple in the overall series. As the heroes venture through the Three Kingdoms, they'll also be venturing through the variety of stages, from the environmental areas Dragon Valley and Tiger Falls, to the more robust settings found in Shenlin Park and Phoenix Highway. New to Avalis is a tropical paradise that is Perusa, where the heroes traverse through the tropical beach, dash to the volcano, and even take to the skies. Very impressive. The overall look of each location is nothing less than perfection. Each location is beautifully detailed and one I classify as artistic. This whole game is simply a work of art and one that I adore. Freedom Planet 2 also introduces hub worlds, where the heroes can not only spoof with the locals, but can also buy items and potions to aid them on their journey. These items are not only useful when in stages, but also in boss fights, as these fights can and will be ass kickers. Don't be surprised if you find yourself spending crystals just to continue. Lives in this game return and this time they can be used to either get back up with barely any life pedals or to reset the checkpoint with all life pedals. Use this wisely to avoid taking any difficult risks, especially in boss fights. I do wish the lives functioned the way that they did in the first game. There are no one-ups to be found like in the first game and the only way to earn one-ups is to accumulate a certain amount of crystals, making them more valuable than before. As for the music in this game, I love it, I love it, I absolutely love it. I heard a little bit of it before the game's release, and to be honest, some of these are so good that they were stuck in my head for a few days. Have a listen for yourself.
on the technical standpoint of this game, I haven't encountered any glitches or problems, but I did find some interesting aspects of the game, such as Lila running infinitely on water in Tidal Gate after the boss fight, or Carol cheating death in Phoenix Highway. Ah. Oh, damn it! Uh, what is happening? Uh, wait. <laughs> wait. Um, what? Wait a second. <laughs> wait, did her getting on the drill cheat death? Oh my god! Wait, hold on. I think we might have cheated death here. Let's see if that's the case. <laughs> Are you fucking serious? No way! No way! No fucking way! We cheated death! Just by getting... <laughs> On the fucking drill thing, we cheated death, she has no health. <laughs> Fuck it, we'll take it. Other than that, Galaxy Trail has done a magnificent job patching the game, though I will miss running endlessly on water. This is not only my game of the year, but hands down one of my favorite games, period. This game shows how a sequel should be and how game franchises earn the number two on their title. Freedom Planet 2 is simply an amazing game that is also a work of art. From the revamping of the gameplay to the richer and deeper story to the beautiful environments with spectacular soundtrack, Freedom Planet 2 is a total package. If you haven't played Freedom Planet 2 yet or the first game, please do so by purchasing both games from Steam. And a big shout out to Sabrina Diderot for her efforts in creating and releasing the game. Be sure to visit her Twitter as well as Galaxy Trials. Both Twitter pages and links to the games will be in the description. With all this said, I hereby bestow my Game of the Year award to Freedom Planet 2. Oh man. Yeah! <laughs> Give it up. Give it up. Give it up, man. Yeah!